Hello Dreamers, welcome to another art tutorial. This video was commissioned by Vector Nature, and it is part of a series that will explore the process of character design. I am re-uploading this video to my channel to give you a chance to ask me direct questions about the process and the app. I hope you like it, enjoy! Hi everyone and welcome back! My name is Maddy, I am an illustrator and I consider myself a bit of a storyteller. In my last video I talked all about designing an original character from A to Z. And this is how we created Jocasta, let's check our progress. Jocasta here is a moody girl with psychic powers and a bit of a temper. She can talk to ghosts and cast spells, but she'd rather just be a normal teenager. Because of her abilities, she made her little ghost friend here, who likes to visit once in a while. And as you can tell, the feeling is not mutual. We've reached a point where we need to give our character a bit more dimension and depth. The illustration is looking quite flat at the moment. It's as if there is no source of light in this universe, which is definitely not the case. In the same way that it's important to create three-dimensional characters, it's equally as important for their visual representation to follow suit. So, let's begin! I prefer to start my shadow process in Procreate, just because it's so much easier to sketch using this tool. I first decide where the source of light is, and then using a bright color, I draw some lines from the origin of the light source towards my two characters, like rays of light. This will help me visualize my composition better. Then I use a dark color to block out all the areas of the characters that are opposite to the light source. These are the areas in the illustration that get the least amount of light. If shading is difficult for you, be sure to do more light studies to understand how the light hits an object and what the resulting shadows end up looking like. It's a skill that you can acquire only with practice. Once this is done, I will use my final study as reference to finalize the actual work with vectors. Once in Vectornator, I will just color in the background with a darker shade to give it a bit more dimension. This is not the final background, but a video on that will be coming soon. I also like to apply a bit of a gradient to some areas on my canvas to give the character more volume. I divide the main shapes into smaller sections and I add a gradient to each limb. And I'm not going to overlook our ghost body either. The way I make my gradients is by going to Style and selecting one of the three boxes at the top, depending on the type of gradient that I want, from Linear to Radial. I prefer to use Radial gradients and I choose to go from the base color to a darker shade of the same color. Next, we will be working with both lights and shadows. First, I create a complete silhouette of the character and main objects. To do so, I select each layer that forms the main shape, duplicate and paste them onto another layer. Then I unify them to create one big shape. This will come in handy later. Using my sketch as a guide, I'm ready to start working with shadows. I prefer to use a cool color like lilac or light blue to do my shadows. Why cool tones? There is a pretty old optical fact that warm lights cast cool shadows that I usually follow and a lot of artists generally do. I actually prefer to go to the cool side of the color wheel, but that's not actual necessity. You can simply pick a cooler tone of a warm color, like something close to grey, to create very realistic shadows. Following this principle, when we move on to our lights, you'll notice that I will use a warm tone. Now, drawing the shadows, I use a similar technique as I did in my previous video, where I draw the main areas with the pencil tool. I prefer the pencil because it's a super easy to use freehand tool that does not require me to set my handles or angles and any of that stuff needed when drawing with the pen tool. Whenever I touch the canvas, the vector will follow. Once that is done, I use Unite to merge all the shapes. And then I adjust here and there with the node tool to make everything look smooth and polished. Oh. 
final step is to set the blending mode of the shadows to multiply and you will see how much depth this trick will give to your shadows. Moving on to the light areas. Using warm tones like yellow or pink, I will draw with the pen this time around to show you guys how you can utilize this tool as well. I switch between the pen and the pencil tool depending on the type of shapes that I have to create. The more curved and smooth the shape, the more I tend to reach for the pen tool. I am basically adding some moon shapes and long rounded shapes where the light touches my characters the most. So areas like her face, hair, legs and arms. Once the lights are done, I set the blending mode to overlay and play with colors until you find the one that gives the light reflection. To continue with the supernatural feel of my piece, I wanted to make the ghost glow. First, I make a duplicate of the entire ghost to which I apply a blur effect. I then position the blurred copy under the layer of my ghost to give the illusion of a glowing effect. Pretty neat, right? As you guys can notice, now these characters have a lot more life, depth and complexity to them. And I also think that their personality really shines through. So you can see how details like lighting and shading will really make your illustration pop. That's it for today, thanks so much for watching. If you like this type of content and you'd like to see more, please like, comment, subscribe and follow Vectornator on Instagram. In my next video, I will focus on designing and drawing up the background, meaning that we will completely finalize this piece. So I'll see you guys then, bye!